I fell in love with working with young people and it's nothing greater to me than helping to improve the lives of our own people. Mm -hmm. And um, working at Job Corps afforded me the opportunity to work with congressional members. Um, making sure that our appropriations were, were done, uh, what was done, our contracts was funded for the next year, uh, making sure that uh, our young people were heard. And a lot of people misunderstand what Job Corps does. They think that these kids are bad or whatever. No, a lot of kids were just dealing with adult issues at an early age and at no fault of their own, but they wanted to be productive. And they came to Job Corps for a second chance looking for a way out. Uh, to make it and be productive in their own communities. And Job Corps offered them those experiences in education. Well, at the time you were working at Job Corps mm -hmm. and serving the community, you were also a city council person. Yeah. Talk more about um, your city council um, career, um, some of the things you got done, and how um, those skills are going to be transferable as a member of Congress. Our Job Corps Center sat in Congressman John Lewis District. And so I'll never forget, I was visiting his office one day, and as a visitor, we were sitting down, we were just talking, it was at the end of the day, and he said, Why don't you run for city council? And, and so I, John Lewis told you that. Yeah. Um, he so was you a just had to do it. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, and John, <laughs> tell you, Congressman John Lewis said, you do something, you better go like, like, like. And I, my, my interest picked up, and he said, Why? He says, I think you will be great. He says, he says, all I ask that you do is um, just serve your community. He says, you're doing a great job. And I think that they, the people could use a person like you. And I, and I thought that was, I thought it was an honor. And, and I received uh, a community service award from Congressman John Lewis because he had recognized a lot of the work that I've been doing. Um, we, um, a lot of our communities were blighted properties. Um, and I, I really wanted to hear and listen to our residents. And I'll never forget, I got elected in November, and in December, um, I was walking the streets again, picking up paper, trying to clean up communities. And one of my residents, I'll never forget her, because she supported me, she says, we didn't elect you to pick up paper. We want you to create policies and, and legislations. Um, and um, we don't want a city council person doing it. And I said, until we understand what that budget looks like, I don't want my young people walking to school in blightedness. That's a great point. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that I stood on what I, I, I ran for. I asked God, I, and I'm very spiritual, I said, God, if you give me this opportunity, I won't let you down, and I want to make sure that my people, we grow and we develop. So often, elected officials, we get in office, and our communities remain the same. And because we, we become bigger than the office. Right. And I think uh, what you were doing, leading by example, you know, there's a spill down effect with that. Yeah. So when people see their leaders out there picking up garbage, out there uh, making a difference, then, it, you know, it's, 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 it's something that impacts the entire community and it kind of uplifts the community. The rising tide it kind of lifts all boats. And that same community that I'm talking about, at that time in 2014, you had properties that were probably going for $5,000, $20,000. Now you go in those communities, you got houses that are going for two hundred fifty, four hundred thousand, and even $700,000 that they're sold in that East Washington community. So I've, I've helped turn those communities around, making sure that we give people, working class people, proud places to live. Why Congress and why not? You know, what is interesting is, I'll never forget, um, I had been serving for a while and um, I was asking some old heads who had been in office and had retired out. And I said, how do you know when you're ready for the next step? He said, your community will let you know when you're ready to stay. He said, they will knock on your door and they say, hey, can you run for this? And so when they came knocking at my door this time, they said, you will be great for Congress because you care a lot and you believe in getting stuff done. Now, Scott has been a mainstay in the 13th for many years. Mm -hmm. Why do people continue to challenge you? You know, it's, I think it's about seven people in this race right now. Um, and that speaks for his record. It doesn't speak for my record. Uh, I can tell you why I'm qualified. I have a law degree. I have 10 years of experience of working in the community and writing legislation and creating policies that are beneficial for the communities. Um, I could tell you that I'm qualified because I am for the people. Everything that I've done 
uh, since I graduated from law school has been about serving people. I'm ready and I'm primed for that. And I want to continue with that same spirit to make sure that like, we take care of our communities, that we want to grow and make sure that, guess what? Even in our growth, we don't leave our community people behind. That district is large. It is. You were a city council person in East Point, which is basically the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But that district is from Rockdale. So Cobb County. It's from Gwinnett. It goes Gwinnett. all the way from Gwinnett all the way to Clayton County. It's like almost like a U shape. It's a new redrawn district. Um, how do you, how will you cover all of that territory? I'm trying. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm meeting. So we were out today. Uh, I got a group of young people. I got about ten of them uh, out today, knocking on doors with me. I mean, and, and so you're excitement. training people up from early <laughs> ages. Yeah. I, I mean, I have high school kids. I mean, we are really like having a good time. We're knocking on doors. It's a grassroots effort for me um, to meet so many people. I met a lot of great people, and, and you're right. I may not be able to knock on seven hundred and forty thousand doors. Um, with that, but I'm going to knock on as many doors as I possibly can, take as many phone calls as I possibly can, um, and, and I'm in the community. I love what I see. What I'm finding is, is that economic development is key, and with that infrastructure, like Gwinnett uh, was established in 1818, mm -hmm. so they need new piping systems, a water system. We have to go in. Uh, Gwinnett is growing by leaps and bounds, and we want to continue to grow. But we also want it to be sustainable. We want to make sure that the infrastructure holds up uh, under the old growth and the new growth. Rockdale, the same thing. Rockdale um, is one of the oldest counties in the state of Georgia. And so the infrastructure, and it is growing by leaps and bounds. We want to make sure that that infrastructure is strong. They can handle that. You know, East Point was a bedroom uh, community, but uh, we are growing by leaps and bounds. And what happens is we got to find a balance. My, my um, way of doing business is collaboration. I want everybody at the table and we want to have a balanced discussion. How can we improve your communities? And, and, I, and, and I've been meeting with quite a few of them. So outside of infrastructure investment, and I think uh, most of that money is going to come through the Build Back Better plan. Absolutely. What other plans do you have for the American people and the people of the state of Georgia? Um, Working families, oh my God. Let me, I almost cried the other day. Uh, I met a couple on the campaign trail. They live in Covington, Georgia. They work at a senior citizen facility and um, bought a house there out of New York, came down for the land of milk and honey, and I think Georgia is the land of milk and honey. Uh, and they bought this house in Covington for $300,000. They're only making $18 an hour. 18 or nine, no, they're making $19 an hour. And they're, that, that means that they're right at $38,000 and $90,000 a year, right? We need to raise minimum wage. We need to make sure that uh, corporations and companies that the people are working for, they can meet the needs of what's going on in, our, on in our communities. Inflation is coming down. We have to admit that it went up and now it's on the way down. How do we help working families stay in their homes and keep that home ownership? Um, those are going to be key for me. Uh, I think um, focusing on working families is what people want in a conference person. And um, I think your message to those people will resonate. You could potentially be working with Donald Trump. How would you deal with him? Reality and in truth. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, we know that, um, you know, I think Donald uh, Trump has, he creates a lot of trauma. And I think he does that to kind of hide uh, from the truth. You know, and it's really sad that he is the uh, front runner at this time. And, 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 but we gotta work with him, we gotta work with him. But the fact of the matter is, I remember what COVID was like when he was denying uh, the fact that COVID exists and telling people to drink bleach. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Maybe, you know, we find it that this is appropriate or acceptable it's not. A lot of people died under his administration from COVID, and we're not that far removed from the COVID, mm -hmm. uh, getting the COVID vaccination out or working with our people. You know, we got to be honest with our communities and how we're moving these things forward. A lot of people lost businesses under that administration because we were not prepared, and we were not prepared under his administration. Mm -hmm. 
we need to process a lot of thought, uh, putting people in the White House that are not looking out for working families. You know, Donald Trump doesn't believe in unions. Um, and we need to make sure that working families, people who are in unions, are protected and okay, that they can go home and make decent wages. He was able to put so many people on the Supreme Court who were able to overturn, or overturn um, the Wade, mm -hmm. um, Roe versus Wade, Roe versus Wade, Wade um, and have really hurt a lot of women reproductive rights so I, and, and 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 that's really sad you brought up a lot of great points but a lot of african americans now are looking back at his um his other policies the business policies um mm -hmm. a lot of um uh, blacks are now saying when donald trump was in office money was flowing through their homes and so if you look on TikTok and and other social media um uh, platforms you're seeing a lot of black people saying, hey, I'm, I'm rolling with Trump. I, I see that, and that's really sad because, uh, that's really sad because it's, it's not true. What happened was the stimulus package was a stimulus package that was set up because of COVID, right? And it wasn't, it didn't die out because Biden got in office. The fact of the matter is it was a COVID stimulus package to make sure families were fed at the time because a lot of our cities were shut down. But however, we really need to take a stronger look at what the um, Trump policies really was and how they really hurt us. If it was so strong, then why did so many black businesses go out of business? Let me tell you this. Agriculture is another key factor for me. Okay. Um, I was raised on a farm. My, my, I remember my father trying to go to get a loan um, to help with the crops that he had and the cows and the cattle that he was turned down um, from getting loans at, at some times. And so, but my nephew, who my father uh, helped raise, has now a 168-acre farm. He is. Um, actually a true farmer. So agriculture, as I travel through all of this great state, is a big part for me. So those people who are interested in getting agriculture, getting into it, uh, maintaining it, holding on, that has a soft spot for me. I just want to make sure people understand that veterans, uh, oh my God, I got nephews who are in the military right now, uncles who uh, was in the military, uh, a big supporter. And what I'm learning also in working with veterans to help them get there, um, who come out injured in some way, cannot get the resources and the support that they need. We need to make sure our veterans are taken care of.